my brother. You know, I've been thinking about something. We've talked about this. Let's give the people more. Oh, they're gonna f*** it up. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we're going to be wrapping up the first week of our salute to Dwayne The Rock Johnson as we celebrate his 50th birthday, and we're going to discuss Walking Tall, starring The Rock, Johnny Knoxville, Neil McDonough, Ashley Scott, Michael Bowen, Kevin Durand, and in a brief blink and you miss her appearance, Kobe Smolters. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today we're wrapping up our first week of Dwayne The Rock Johnson movies, and we're going to discuss Walking Tall. This movie has a similar tone to the rundown as far as the rock portraying this kind of lone wolf character granted in the rundown he had a sidekick in sean william scott and here he has a sidekick in johnny knoxville but in both movies he very much conveys that take charge no nonsense type of lone wolf character so these movies can very much be confused by some of the general audiences that don't know any better. Let's get into it here, shall we? As our movie opens, we meet Chris Vaughn, a United States Army Special Forces Sergeant who has just been honorably discharged from the military. Chris is returning to his small town home in Kitsap County, Washington, after a series of miscellaneous combat deployments. Looking for work, Chris discovers that the local cedar mill was closed down three years prior by its heir, Jay Hamilton, who turned around and opened a casino, which is now responsible for the majority of the revenue for the town. Jay is a childhood friend of Chris's, so Jay invites Chris to the casino for a night of fun. While enjoying the perks, of the VIP experience, Chris stumbles upon his childhood friend, Denny, who is now working at the casino 
as a stripper. Later that evening, Chris notices that the craps dealer has swapped the dice for a pair of loaded dice and demonstrates his finding to the patrons calling the roll before tossing the dice. When the floor man declares no payout, Chris initiates a fight. And although he is able to beat down most of the security guards, he is subdued with a cattle prod and knocked unconscious. The security staff then takes Chris into the basement where Jay's right-hand man and head of security, Booth, tortures him by cutting his torso with a utility knife before dumping him on a roadside, where Chris is then found by a trucker passing by and taken to the hospital. Thankfully, Chris recovers quickly. Once he is fully recovered, Chris goes to the local sheriff, Stan Watkins, in order to press charges against the security guards at the casino. But Sheriff Watkins refuses to allow him to do so because the casino is too important to the town's economy, declaring it a no-fly zone. Not too long after this, Chris learns that his nephew, Pete, has experimented with crystal meth, which was sold to his friends by the casino security guards. Furious by these developments, Chris goes to the casino, armed only with a piece of lumber, and begins to destroy the casino property, brutally beating the security guards when they attempt to stop him. Chris is then apprehended by Sheriff Watkins and his deputies as he attempts to drive away from the scene. In the ensuing trial, all of Jay's security and staff testify against Chris. And when the judge allows Vaughn to plead his case, Chris fires his appointed attorney who is under Hamilton's employment. After making a passionate speech about the town's great former self, Chris tells the jury and the other townspeople in attendance that if he is cleared of the charges, he will run for sheriff and clean up the town. In order to further emphasize his plea, Chris reveals the grotesque scars on his torso from being tortured by the guards and the casino staff. Therefore, Chris is found not guilty and ends up winning the election for sheriff. Upon taking office, Chris fires the entire police force and then deputizes his friend, Ray Templeton, whom Chris feels like he can trust as well as utilize. See, Ray has knowledge about narcotics and is able to use that knowledge to educate Chris in the field. Chris and Ray then go and plant drugs onto Booth in order to take him into custody as a way to attempt to make him reveal some information on the town's drug operation. They hold him captive in a garage and force him to watch as they destroy and strip down his truck right in front of him. Steadfast, Booth still doesn't talk. Chris then assigns Ray to stand watch over his house as Chris knows that Jay will likely target Chris's family. While Chris remains at the sheriff's office in order to supervise Booth. There he is visited by Denny, who stops by under the pretense of bringing him food and then reveals to him the fact that she's just quit her job as the casino stripper. The two end up spending the night together at the office, and the next morning, Watkins and his former deputies arrive at the office, where they blow up Chris's truck and shoot gunfire upon the building with machine guns. Realizing the predicament that they're in, Booth pleads to Chris for him to be let out of his cell in exchange for the information that Chris has been attempting to obtain. Booth reveals that the old cedar mill 
is where the drugs are being produced. But then he is immediately killed by the gunfire of the attackers. Chris is able to kill all of the attackers with the assistance of Denny. Chris's parents' house is attacked just as expected, but his father and Ray are able to dispatch the gunmen. After ensuring their safety, Chris heads to the old cedar mill where he discovers a meth lab, as well as Jay calmly waiting in a control room. Jay attempts to kill Chris with the mill equipment by dropping him through a trap door, but Chris drags Jay down with him, and the two end up falling through a chute. Chris, whose leg is injured, is able to tend to his injury in a nearby forest before Jay attacks him with an axe. As the two fight for their lives, Chris is able to come out on top, crippling Jay. Chris then places his former friend under arrest and takes him into custody with Ray's assistance. Chris is able to shut down the casino, and in the closing scene, it is revealed that the cedar mill is now back and operational in full production. Now, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of similarities between this movie and The Rundown. In both films, The Rock plays kind of a lone wolf um, lead hero. In The Rundown, he's a bounty hunter. In Walking Tall, He's an ex-Army Special Forces op. Both movies, he has a comedic sidekick, Sean William Scott and Johnny Knoxville. You know, both movies, he's trying to do something better for himself and the people around him, getting the gato for the local tribes and helping them be able to free themselves from um, Christopher Watkins' character's grapple hold on the town, putting Jay out of business so that the cedar mill can succeed and thrive again like it used to for the town. You know, for, for the casual fan, these movies are very interchangeable. However, that doesn't mean that I like it any less. I enjoy this film pretty much on the exact same level as I enjoy the rundown. This is definitely a more dramatic action role for The Rock, whereas the rundown is a more comedic action role. But again, we're just adding more things to that boiling pot of what is going to end up making Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, one of Hollywood's biggest paid leading actors. The Scorpion King was pretty much all action. The Rundown was action comedy. Walking Tall is action drama. Yeah, there's a few ha-ha moments in there because you've got Johnny Knoxville, but this is more of an action drama than it is an action comedy. So now you've got the Rock doing action, doing comedy, during drama. And it's all starting to come together for him within the span of about two, three years here in Hollywood. So WWE, Dwayne Johnson, whoever was in charge of launching that career definitely was doing the right thing by putting the puzzle pieces in the place at the proper moments. Well done, because without these three movies, Rock wouldn't have endured for 20 years in Hollywood. Simple. You know, I know I talked about it a little bit on Monday with The Scorpion King and how that movie turns 20 this year, and without The Scorpion King, there is no rock longevity. These last two days of movies, The Rundown on Wednesday and Walking Tall today, are just as important of pieces in that concoction. 
when it comes to my rating for Walking Tall, you know, I, I said that I put it on the same level as the rundown and that I rated about the same. I'm actually going to take that back just a smidge because I do like Walking Tall just a little bit less than I walk than I like the rundown. And in such, I'm going to give Walking Tall three and a half out of five instead of four stars. Again, just something about it that makes me like it just a smidge less than I enjoy the rundown. But I'm curious, what do you guys think of Walking Tall? Let me know if you're watching the premiere. Leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. But let's engage. Let's get a conversation going. Let's get a dialogue going discussing these movies because I am curious and I genuinely want to know what you think about these films that I'm discussing from Dwayne Johnson's filmography. Make sure you guys tune in next time right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when we take a look at the all-star cast that is Be Cool. Starring John Travolta, Uma Thurman, Cedric the Entertainer, Vince Vaughn, The Rock, Andre Benjamin, Christina Milian, Harvey Keitel, Danny DeVito, James Woods, Seth Green, and Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. You're not going to want to miss out on that one next time, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, right back here on an all new Renegades Reviews, when we take a look at Be Cool. And we start off a brand new week of films from The Rock's filmography. Thank you to each and every one of you guys that have tuned in with me today and joined me for this. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given me. And I will see you guys next time.